Even though mandatory retirement was largely phased out in most of Canada, many laws and policies still hinge on this age. For instance, workers' compensation benefits often cease at 65. Obligations to rehire workers following an injury only apply until someone turns 65. So do we need to rethink what we mean by working age and retirement, given how much longer and healthier people are living these days? And what would that even look like? David, I'll start with you. I think the answer to that is yes. I think, uh, uh, this, again, I, I don't like arbitrary numbers like that. 65 is, I think, as old, I think my memory's right, it's, it's as old as uh, Bismarck. It was established for uh, having to do with the ability to pay and dealing primarily with public servants, army and navy and so on and so forth. Um, so the 65 just came from an arbitrary circumstance at a particular time. So should we be looking at changes in it? Absolutely. Well, and how about for CPP, for example? To collect CPP was established, you begin to collect it at 65. Of course, you can collect it early at 60 and as late as 70. Mm -hmm. 65 was also established as the, the age by which you begin to collect OAS. Do we need to rethink these benchmarks? I, I, so the Harper government looked at OAS and said, it's not sustainable uh, and they need to change it. But I think they changed it in the wrong way. They moved it from 65 to 67. And I argued with them at the time in columns and such was that no, you should just don't give it out to people making 120 grand a year. There are people still getting money. If you're making 100, 120 thousand dollars a year in retirement, that's post tax, post retirement. You don't need checks from the government at that point. You're you're doing okay. Uh, they should have done that, and and so I'd be in, in favor of bringing changing the means test of it, but some people are still going to retire earlier. If you're working a, a physical job, you probably want to be done by 65. Right. Working anyway. Doesn't right. mean you're done contributing. But you know, there are a lot of people working, so why can't workers' comp go past? Why can't, if we need to reform OAS, just say, well, if you're well off, you don't, you don't need to get this. Mm -hmm. CARP members have been surveyed on this issue, Rudy. What do they say? Well, about 80% uh, who are retired. <laughs> at 65, like being retired at 65, and uh, if offered the opportunity to work, 80% said no, they, they like they like it as it is. But there are a lot of people, myself included, that um, you know have wanted to continue to work. I was an, uh, the chief executive of a public television network, and when I crossed the 65 barrier um, about seven years ago, it took a board, a special board resolution to, um, keep me on and to provide uh, long-term disability, which you can't get from an insurance company. The kind, you know, our, our network had to um, self-insure. There, there are a lot of issues that arise with it. I had to take my pension at 71, even though I was working. Uh, also that's with the CPP requirement. So even though there's a real benefit to keeping people working, uh, not just because we lack a lot of the skills and older people have a lot to offer uh, and it keeps us off <laughs> collecting our pension and, and building it instead. And yet we have uh, <clears throat> all these structural issues that motivate people, incentivize them to leave the workforce when in fact the workforce needs a lot of people. And if you, my dad was a long haul truck driver. He retired at the first opportunity. I've had, you know, a great life in, in television show business. My biggest hazard has been a paper cut. So I'm happy to continue uh, working and we should change the systems to make that a lot easier for people that choose to work. You know, John, he makes a good point, and surely you know in some of the surveys that you've conducted, many older Canadians are feeling very pessimistic about their finances right now. Well, we have 30% of the people in this country who don't believe they'll ever be able to retire. 15% of those over the age of 55 are going to continue working because they can't stop working. It's not that they desire to, it's just that they have to keep earning the money. So That's right. there are, you know, some pass there is pessimism out there. The, the greater pessimism comes when you look at the standard of living with fixed incomes. And we're seeing that in major centers, and and it's easy for someone to say, well, you know, just move out of town to a smaller place to go to. Well, you know, that's a huge disruption of family and friends and health care and a whole series of other things to go where. So, yeah, there there is some real serious concerns coming up. Um, let alone those issues, we also then have immigration that we're going to have to bring in more people to support the very people that we're leaving behind. So I think there is some pessimism on it. I think, again, there's a lot of uh, put off of it, 
You know, like that, that one phrase of, you know, I don't want to talk about it now. We'll see where it is, just as I said earlier, about it's right in front of us and we don't want to realize that it's that close. We're at a tipping point in the next five years or so where it's going to be right in front of us and we're going to have to deal with all of this stuff. What are some of the things companies should be doing to encourage people to stay in the workforce? If they wanted to keep people, then I think you could look at um, uh, flexible work hours or arrangements, which we're all doing now in the post-COVID era. Uh, companies having to look at, you know, do you have flexibility to work from home? Uh, how many days a week can you work from home? If you're at, you know, current normal retirement age and you don't want to uh, stop working completely, do you keep going with, you know, a modified schedule where, all right, well, I'm, I'm working four days a week or maybe 80% over five days. Things like that could happen. But, you know, there's also, and I know this acutely from my own company, there's also you know, unions involved with very strict rules on some of this that make this flexibility difficult. And you, you were in the uh, public, um, in, you know, in, in government, and they have some of the strongest and strictest union rules going around. So I think everyone has to learn how to be flexible, not governments, companies, labor unions, all of them. Can I just shoehorn in one thought, and that is I think that rather than having an exit strategy where they look at older people and say, look, we, they are earning 200000 bucks or 150000 bucks, and they're a drain on the bottom line, and we can get some younger people in here, which is oftentimes the case, I think you should have the discussion with the older person and say, do you really need this much? I mean, there's very rarely that discussion where somebody says, look, I'm earning two thirty. I mean, and that's a lot of money that we're talking about, and kind of say, well, look, I only need one fifty, and I could keep it around. Like, we talk this game. I did the, the first issues that I ever did on this were for the Royal Bank back in 1999. And it talked about whether or not there should be that opportunity to do so. And we still don't have it in society. It often is the case where somebody just gets, you know, the, the, the pink slip notice and they're put out and they bring on some younger people because of that bottom line issues. Because they're the most issues. expensive employees. Yeah, but there's never the discussion to try and do something about it and, and, and have that discussion because what you're taking away is institutional memory and knowledge That's out right. there. And there is a price that you can pay for that, but you can also salvage it. You know, I think that's all possible. I think making the, the workspace more flexible makes a lot of sense. But, you know, I think start, starting not with what incentives you had to have, I think just uh, removing some disincentives. Again, you know, the ability to uh, continue uh, uh, contributing to your pension, being able to get long-term disability, making it, uh, you know, so just removing the disincentives. I'm sure a lot of people would like to uh, make their, uh, you know, work uh, more flexible or whatever. And sure, that that's great. But I'm not sure that that's the biggest issue for people. People that like to work like to work. I think the bigger issues are, again, the disincentives. And I go back to this uh, Canada Pension Plan, uh, the insurance around being old and when when the uh, company's insurance stops covering you. And so it, let's start with the, removing the disincentives. That, that would be my position first. All right. A good conversation. When we come back, we'll get to some of your questions and comments. That's next. <laughs> 